home, the Twins look to kick off another one tonight inside Target Field. This time around, it's back to interleague play with a three-game set against the Milwaukee Brewers. The crew comes to town on a three-game winning streak, but they still have some work to do in the NL Central, sitting three and a half games back of the first-place Cubs. And speaking of first place, the Twins still have a hold of it in the AL Central race, a game and a half up on the Indians, who, despite some internal issues, have taken seven of their last ten games. Hi, everyone. Welcome inside Target Field. I'm Audra Martin. When these two teams met last week, the Twins were looking to snap a four-game skid, and they did so in a big way, doubling up the Brewers on runs scored en route to their fifth series win of the season. And they'll look for similar results starting tonight. So let's set up this three-game series against Milwaukee. At 41 years old, Nelson Cruz is showing no signs of slowing down. He was 6 for 12 with four home runs and five ribbies in the series against the Royals and is now in the AL's top 10 in batting average, home runs, and RBI. The Bruin Brewers took three of four against the Cubs this weekend for their first three-game winning streak of the season. However, it did not come easy. All three wins were one-run games, including an extra inning victory on Saturday. Now they'll go up against one of the best pitching staffs in baseball. Minnesota's three 33 ERA is the third lowest mark in the league and a solid improvement from their 457 mark at this point a season ago. Coming up, the one and only Burt Blylevin is back in the booth tonight alongside Dick Bramer. They'll kick things off with a look at what's made Kenta Maeda such a success so far this season. Brought to you by Northland Ford. Visit buyfordnow.com and your local Northland Ford dealer today. By Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine for the everyday competitor in all of us. By Menards. Save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. And by Luther Group. Show the Twin Cities' largest selection of vehicles at lutherauto.com. It's another beautiful night at our beautiful ballpark in the opener of a three-game series between the Twins and the Milwaukee Brewers. And a co-ace for the Twins so far this year has been the newly acquired Kenta Maeda. He'll make his second straight start against Milwaukee here tonight. And we welcome you to Target Field. Dick Bramer rejoined by Hall of Famer Burt Blylevin. Kenta Maeda has gone down as one of the great acquisitions during the offseason, not just for the Twins, but I think in all of baseball. Burt, he's been outstanding. He's given the Twins a great chance to win all four of his prior starts. Yeah, he really has, Dick. You look at what Maeda brings with him, a guy that spent four years in a Dodger uniform, now in a Twins uniform. He knows he's not going to blow hitters away. He has to use all his pitches and boy has he a fastball a curveball a slider and an outstanding split change. He doesn't walk a lot of batters has not allowed a lot of hits and what he's been able to do for the Twins is get deep into the ballgame. So nice to see Maeda out there here tonight. Twins have won a whole bunch of low scoring ball games so far this year and they do that with good pitching but with good defense and Eddie Rosario in left field has already come up with a handful of really great plays. You know, the other night he saved maybe the ball game by making a nice diving catch, but I think everybody has seen what Eddie Rosario's all about. Yes, he can hit. He can hit balls all over the place, but it's his arm, too. He also saves runs with that arm, kind of putting that shotgun and gun back in its holster. But he's been fun to watch, a guy that plays with a lot of enthusiasm. And here the other night, right there, good throw to Gonzalez, getting the Twins out of a tough situation. Well, Randy Dobnak and Kenta Maeda have led the Twins starting rotation so far and the Twins will send Maeda to the mound see if he can beat the Brewers in back to back starts. He was put back on the baseball map thanks to 101 wins and a record setting season of long balls. This season they put together a triple threat. The offense is still explosive. The pitching staff is one of the best top to bottom in baseball and the defense has been stopping offenses all season long. Tonight the Twins look to stay on target at home against the Brewers. And absolutely perfect weather the Twins coming off a four game series win against the Kansas City Royals winning three of the four games. They've only lost one series and that was the three game series they were swept in in Kansas City. And the Brewers struggling to score runs but yet they're 10 and 10. 
And in a year when most teams are going to get into the playoffs, they're right in the thick of things in the National League Central. Here's the Menards batting order for Craig Council. Avasail Garcia leading off, then Christian Yelich, Keston Gura, Justin Smoke, Ryan Braun, Omar Narvaez, Ben Gamel, Luis Urias, and Eric Sogard. Well, the starting staff stats are brought to you by Home Furniture, and that's uh, Maeda on the mound making his fifth start, as, as you mentioned, Dick, his second straight against the Milwaukee Brewers. He pitched against the Brewers six days ago, pitched an outstanding ball game, gave up only two runs in six and two-thirds innings. 85 pitches, 63 of the 85 were over the plate. The Twins defense has been incredible. Just two errors. Here's the way they line up. Brought to you by Northland Ford. Rosario Buxton Kepler in the outfield. Marwin Gonzalez, Jorge Polanco, Luis Arise, Miguel Sano, and Alex Aviva. And Rosario really stepped up with some big time defensive plays in that Kansas City series. Picked up a couple of assists. Polanco has started and played 21 games at short has yet to commit an error. The errors by the way Miguel Sano and the defensive replacement oddly a Ray Adrianza committing one as well. Well this guy's been just brilliant in his outings in his start against the Brewers he retired the first 11 batters he faced. You know and that's what I think I have watched Maeda what he's been able to do is put zeros up on the board early. Now he's had some nice run support but he knows the importance of going out there and doing exactly that right there. Get strike one. Avisail Garcia leading things off. In his first year with the Brewers. Almost 70 percent of the first or the hitters that he has faced so far this year making his fifth start. He's been able to get strike one. That is outstanding. Down and away, one and one. Well, let's see. He has kept the ball in the ballpark for the most part. He doesn't walk people. He doesn't give up many hits. That's pitching is so easy. If you <laughs> if you do those things, yeah. you're going to be three and zero oh in four starts. Well, I love his delivery because you know he's right about the middle part of that pitching rubber. He takes a little step back and then hesitates, allows that arm to catch up. Pops straight up in the air. And Avila just barely in the grass. Has a rattle a little bit through that glove, but he hangs on one away. Oh, and that start last Wednesday in Milwaukee, as said, he, admit, he pitched six and two thirds innings, the longest outing for a twin starter so far this year. He put zeros on the board until the sixth inning, but at that time he had a 10 to nothing lead thanks to a five run second inning that the Twins were able to put on the board against the Brewers. There is that. He's been given a lot of run support in his uh, four starts with the Twins. But it's remarkable through four starts just three run producing hits he's given up a two run homer a three run homer and then Luis Urias's two run single in his start against Milwaukee. Just off the outside corner ball one. As we scroll through the Milwaukee lineup you'll see a lot of batting averages like Yelich's one ninety four smoke two oh six Narvaez one forty Gamble one fifty one. Brewers are one of many teams that have really struggled offensively this year. Well this guy right here former MVP in, in Christian Yelich uh, he started off very slowly but he's picked it up as of late hitting almost 300 over the last seven or eight ball games. Two and out to Yelich. And now three and oh. Maeda has walked one man in each of his four prior starts. Keston Hira on deck. And he missed with four. One out walk. And Yelich goes to first base. Hero will bat with Yelich aboard. What we're having here in the first inning is a, a rarity for Maeda because there's actually a runner on base. 
Now he can take care of it if he can get a ground ball from Hira. Mentioned in his start against Milwaukee, he retired the first 11 batters. Marco Baldelli has seen one of his new pitchers take his turn every five or six days, as Maeda has, and really given them a great chance to win. Yeah, when Kent is on, he will get a lot of ground ball outs. Steps off right there. Yelich at first base. Brewers don't run a lot. They have attempted eight stolen bases, successful five times. And Yelich won for two in stolen base. Missing inside. That there's a runner on base makes us a bit of a rarity. He's had 23 complete innings pitched, and 14 of them have been one, two, three innings. Mm, He's been standard. pitching from the windup <laughs> in most of his innings the entire inning. In there for a strike one and one. Now in this day and age, it just seems like one, two, three innings. If you, for one thing, your starter's only going to have probably six innings these days. But if you get a one, two, three inning, and you get two of them, you've had a, yourself a pretty good night. And it's most, a it's a rarity. Yeah, most of his innings have been three up, three down. One and one to Hira. Missing inside, and it's two and one. Uh, he's been a strike thrower in his first four starts, but right now, he's thrown 10 pitches, only three over the plate. But all you need is one good one down in the zone, get that ground ball. Cut on and missed. Yeah, he hasn't had a ground ball double play, but that's misleading because there haven't been many guys on base. Kind of hard to. Have your infielders turn too if there's nobody on base. Well, you can see almost 73 percent strikes with breaking balls this season, and right there in a fastball situation, he trusts that slider. He trusts the curveball, a little slider over the curveball, but he's around the plate. Well, tried inside with a fastball. That's a full count. We'll see if the Brewers send Yelich. I suspect they will. Smoke on deck. Teams are one for one in stolen base attempts with Maeda on the mound. I agree. They're going to send them right here. They don't. Wow. And you're <laughs> at a weak spot upstairs chasing high fastballs, and he just chased one for strike three. That looked like a breaking ball right there that was above his letters, but uh, looking to make contact. And Maeda picks up a big strikeout, almost like a little cutter. Yeah. You can see it coming out of those fingers, the rotation of that ball, almost a slider type spin. Interesting on a Zoom call today, Wes Johnson, the Twins pitching coach, said he called that area at the top end of the strike zone or just above. He says that's a gold mine these mm -hmm. days for getting strikes, particularly with breaking balls. And that's exactly how that at bat played out. Here's Smoke. It might have been a good thing that Yelich didn't go with that pitch upstairs. That would have been an easy one for Avila yes. to handle. Yes, I think Dick too. You that, that what we see is umpires calling the higher strike, so the hitters are are still a little leery of exactly where is that high strike going to be called. Jeremy Rehack is the home plate umpire for tonight's game. Way out in front, strike one. Smoking his first season with the Brewers, 11th season in the big leagues with the Rangers and Mariners, the Blue Jays. All star back in 2017 was he when he's a member of Toronto. Yelich goes now and the pitch grounded to the glove side of Sano, who makes the play to end the inning. Yelich left the board, a scoreless top of the first inning. Kansas City series. You know, the Twins technically split that two game series with the Pirates and then they lost the one in Kansas City. 
uh, made up their four game losing streak. Here's the Menards batting order for the Twins in game one. Max Kepler, Jorge Polanco, Nelson Cruz, Eddie Rosario, Marwin Gonzalez, Luis Arais, Miguel Sano, Byron Buxton, and Alex Avila. And tonight's starting pitcher stats are brought to you by Home Furniture, and that's right-handed 25-year-old Corbin Burns making just his second start of the year. This is his fifth appearance. His last start a couple starts ago back on the 8th of August he pitched outstanding in that ball game. They say that last year was a frustrating year for him. He didn't have a slider. They said he found his slider so we'll wait and see how well he pitches. He's a strikeout pitcher. Here's Kepler standing in. Away ball one. 11 walks and 16 innings for Burns and 24 strikeouts. But he has kept the ball in the ballpark. Just one home run allowed. He gave up 17 home runs in 49 innings with the Brewers last year. 1 and 0 to Kepler. Hit hard but foul. Yeah, that fastball can get in the upper 90s. Hard slider, and that's the one that they say he found that they feel like he needs to be in that starting rotation if he can get that slider over. They have confidence in him to do that. Also mixes in a curveball and a changeup. His first appearance this year was a start, then three straight relief appearances back in the rotation here tonight against the Twins. On the ground, easy play for Smoke. To the bag, one away. Northland Ford defense for the Brewers. And without Lorenzo Kane in center, that means Avasail Garcia has to play center. Gamble in right, Yelich in left. An infield of Sogard, Urias, Kira, and Smoke. No more Narvaez, who's improved behind the plate in his first year with the Brewers. One down and now Jorge Polanco. In there, strike one. So far, Burns has done well. Given up, told you the 11 walks, but just eight hits, an opponent batting average of 151. But Polanco had a good series against the Royals and his average back over 300. Down the left field line and foul by a few feet. Well, tonight's Pizza Ranch for the win. Get to the Brewers starters early. They have an outstanding bullpen. Combined starters for the Brewers, very high, 4.44. Their bullpen outstanding. You got some great arms out there, so you want to get to the starters early. Two strikes to the twin shortstop. And another foul. Twins 10 and 2 at home. Leading the division by a game and a half. Toward the hole gathered in by Hira and he throws Polanco out two down a good slider down in the zone creates a second ground ball out and that'll bring up Nelson Cruz subject of tonight's stats with lows age doesn't matter it hasn't mattered to Nelson Cruz he checks into this at bat with 409 lifetime home runs tied with Mark Teixeira for the 55th spot on the all time list. He's like a fine wine, getting better with age. And he takes a 98 mile per hour fastball at the knees. Cruz, third in the American League in hitting, behind Bo Bichette. And DJ LeMahieu. Now, neither one of those guys are going to be playing for a while. They're both on the injured list. 
Cruz is third in home runs with eight behind Aaron Judge. He's not going to hit any for a few more days as he's on the injured list, and Mike Trout seems to be hitting one every <laughs> night. But Cruz is leading the league and runs batted in with 23. Keeping in mind that the Twins have only played 23 games. Second one in the dirt, and it's two and one. Otherworldly OPS of 1125. Mm, boy. It's gotten some big hits already. And there's a lot more in that man right there. Cruz. Well, we almost see, can see Burns trying to do something. A little more than he's capable out there. He's hurrying his delivery. He's misfired badly in his last three pitches. You know, when you're out on that mound, what you do is watch the hitter at the plate, and you watch Nelson Cruz. Not a lot of movement. He picks up that left leg a little bit. Puts that bat on his shoulder. Now he's ready. Not a lot of bat movement. Here she comes. And after delivering strike one, he missed with four straight. Cruz goes to first, and that'll bring up Rosario. We told you about the control issues. Now, 12 walks in 16 and two thirds innings this year. Here is Rosario. He's got some big hits six home runs, 18 runs batted in. In fact, his 18 runs batted in or tied for eighth in the league. Well, you think uh, you think about that, Dick. The guy in front of him is hit, knocked in 23, so not many left on the plate. Right. That's hit well to left field. Yelich is back, and on the edge of the track makes the catch. A scoreless first between Milwaukee and Minnesota. Have an impressive plus 38 run differential so far this season. Last year, 23 games in, it was plus 17. Is Rocco Baldelli surprised? He says no because everything feels different this year. He says these guys are playing a different brand of baseball, which has given me a different taste on the bench, and that is a good thing. Plus, he says the only run differential I care about is the one at the end of the night. Wes Johnson says there is a new frontier in pitching when it comes to breaking balls up in the zone. He said he's been looking at the stats and the data and says, yes, high cutters and sliders up in the zone have been producing an extremely high whiff rate, but he also touched on what appears to be an expanded strike zone this season, pointing out the fact that this team has had the same handful of umpires all season long so he says if they are consistent consistently calling a wider strike zone we'll go and find those strikes and Dick and Burt if there's a guy that's going to help these guys find that gold mine as you mentioned earlier it's Wes Johnson <laughs> yeah, he's done a great job with the staff one strike to Braun strike two you know and that's kind of nice that you know Audra mentioned that a lot of the same umpires are Kind of following a lot of these teams around, and the Twins. I think uh, Jerry Meal is a crew, crew chief here. He's been here already with a couple of the other guys. So you, know, you get a, they get a chance to see what kind of stuff you have. Line drive right over the rubber, right over the second base bag. Arrives with the catch, one away. Contest your Twins knowledge with Tuesday Twins trivia. Which Twins pitcher has struck out the most Brewers in his career? You can tweet your answer at twins with the hashtag twins trivia for your chance to win a 2020 Northland Ford home opener quarter zip. One down and now Omar Narvaez. You know it, it goes beyond seeing the same umpires series after series. The umpires have been flying with the teams this year to try to minimize if not altogether eliminate commercial air travel for the umpires. So, you know, everybody's got to get along, right? Because you're going to be spending a lot of time together, maybe even some unexpected time on a plane with an umpiring crew. Narvaez with a strike. 20th pitch for Maeda. Now, I said in his last start, 
that I wanted to count the number of hops on the weak <laughs> round balls. Go ahead. I had that one for about seven. <laughs> the one to Sano in the first inning was just two, but I'm going to mark down seven. With the point being, these aren't hard one hoppers that the infielders are fielding. A lot of ground balls like the one we just saw. Now, see if you can count the hops. We might even slow it down to see if we can count. <laughs> one, two, three, four, six. Just six. <laughs> well, that's what pitching's all about, and that's what Maeda does such a good job of changing the angle of that hitter's bat as far as if every pitch is 90 miles an hour, well, they're going to catch up to you, but it'll be 90, it'll be 92, and add and subtract so well. Here's Gamble, 1 0. No hops on that one, a little pop fly to center. And Buxton glides in to put it away, and there's one of those one, two, three innings again for Kenta Maeda. Baseball today, Fernando Tatis Jr. doing this on a 3 0 pitch with his team, the Padres, already up 10 3. Rangers were upset. They threw behind Manny Machado, the next batter. The pitcher was suspended for a game, so too manager Chris Woodward for their reactions. And so with the Marwin Gonzalez standing in the box here leading off the twin second. I mean the first school I went to was built in 1919. So I guess that means I'm old school but you're even older school <laughs> than I am. How'd you well, feel about that. You know what I don't have a problem with that. You know I mean you got bases loaded. Yeah it's a 10 but you got to throw strikes. You got a good throw quality strikes. You're not out there to make friends, okay? You're out there to beat the other team, and if they're going to give you a cookie down the middle with bases loaded, go ahead and hit. Now, I have a problem with the guy hitting the next, you know, throwing it over Machado. Right. Wait till Tatis comes up again, and then drill him. If you're upset, if you yes, it, it, right. One and one to Gonzalez, then Arise and Sano. The old unwritten rules of baseball. I think a lot of those are gone. Well, they're disappearing. Yes, sir. And there's a reason they weren't written down in the first place, in my opinion. I mean, some of them just don't seem to make any sense. This was in the eighth inning, I think it was, top of the eighth inning. Mm -hmm. Two and one to Gonzalez. Trying to get something started against Corbin Burns. <laughs> into the ship between the legs right through the wicket and one away that'll bring up our eyes you know as a pitcher you release that ball and you hope to field your position well but Gonzalez hitting it right back up watch Burns reaction whoa <laughs> and there's your second baseman to get the out now our eyes and our eyes had a good series against the Royals Kick the average up to 274. Center. And Garcia retreating. Still going back, and he makes the catch near the edge of the track. Two down. Hey, I want to bring this up because I was on the KQRS morning show this morning with Tom Bernard, and Tom, a big baseball fan, and, and, and he said, Something that when we do road games, uh, he can't tell that that you know we're not there, and I've heard that a lot, and I, and I just want to point out to the viewers. What do you mean you're not there? Well, I mean, like, <laughs> yeah, the people have been saying that <laughs> about you for years. But I, I just want to tell people that when we get back, when the Twins are back on the road and we're working here, that's because of the people we're working with. We got a lot of really great people. That are working very hard to try to create the illusion that we're actually there. And to the extent it's been working, it's because of the people, you know, I get to work with. So I, I appreciate the sentiments, but uh, a lot of really good professional people are working hard to try to make that happen. Well, this is my first game, and I've watched almost every game from the home down in Fort Myers. And I'll tell you what, even though the team has been on the road, it's like you're there with yeah. them. So you guys are doing a great job, and you're right. The crew here is fantastic. Everybody in the truck. One on one to Sano. Cut on and missed one and two. Twins have put the ball in play in five at bats against Burns, and of course that's been an issue 
force to know. We can kind of see why the Brewers want this young man in the rotation. He signed in 2016 by the Brewers. It didn't take him long to get to the big leagues. He's got an outstanding arm. Now can he control that pitch right there a nasty slider. And Burns has a one two three second inning. Effective lineup to uh, stay in the hunt they're ten and ten they took three from the Cubs in our Sanford Health injury report concerning uh, Chris Bryant and his left wrist which has been given uh, him some trouble. Twins will play the Cubs. Oh, mid to late September at Wrigley Field. Here's Luis Urias. He's been swinging it pretty good since he was activated from the COVID-19 list. One strike. Five of eight first pitch strikes. He was the guy that drove in the two runs against Maeda in his start at Miller Park. Foul ball, two strikes. Twenty fifth pitch coming. Three quality starts for Maeda. The only time he didn't give the Twins a quality start, it's only because he pitched five innings and not six. And he's handled the bottom. Of the batting orders he's faced. So he's only hitting 115 off of them. Getting an extra day of rest. Something that Wes Johnson and Marco Baldelli frequently do to their starting pitchers. Another two strike pitch with Solgard to follow. Bieler digs it out of the dirt. No, that was that split finger right there when Mahita sets up. He'll put that split finger into his hand, so then he changes in the glove if he goes to something else. Don't you move that ball in the glove? Spread those fingers apart. That's his split finger grip. Does he stay with it? Right, what well with the slider? Two and two now. Ball sailed in, tailed in on him, and he almost almost hit Urias in the chest. Yeah, get out of my kitchen. <laughs> almost like a two seam fastball, has some run on it. Another 2 2 coming. It was a Franco with the Kansas City Royals that got that pitch and hammered it into his left foot numerous times. Two hops. And Urias is retired. You know, one thing I've noticed too, Dick, on the defense, we talk about the great defense, but you look at these guys, no matter where they're playing, Gonzalez has played outstanding. How many throws have been low to Sano? They've all been really about chest high. Nice play right there by Gonzalez, almost sidearmed it over there, but chest high throw to the first baseman. Probably the most improved area for the Twins throws from the left side of the infield. Sano struggled with that last year. Polanco struggled with it last year. Here's Sogard. It is now retired six straight Brewers. And another strike one. Brewers are really missing Lorenzo Kane, not only in center field, but he was a good leadoff guy for them. And when the Twins were in Milwaukee, I almost said we're in Milwaukee. Well, we're in Milwaukee, but in the series at Miller Park, Sogard hit leadoff. Now he's hitting ninth. Garcia's hitting leadoff now. The leadoff batters for the Brewers are hitting just 155. 
You know, Dick, and you talk, talk about Kane. It's not only what he does between the lines, it's also his leadership in the clubhouse when you, when a veteran like that decides, you know, to not play. Opted out because of concerns about COVID 19. Right. One and one to Sogard. Two and one. We'll have to wait and see it. How it turns out, of course, but the assumption is in baseball that if you play 500 baseball, you've got a good chance of getting in the tournament at the end, the postseason. And here are the Brewers, 20 games in, they're playing 500 baseball. Now, the <laughs> alarming thing for me is a week from now, Middle of next week, we'll already be halfway through yes. the season. <laughs> and it seems like we're just yeah. getting started. I'm just glad there is baseball. Yeah, me too. It's a 60 game season, and the Twins have played 23. And uh, under the assumption they won't have any interruptions next week at this time, they will have completed their 30th game. And a foul tip, and Avila hangs on, and it's a strikeout, two down. And strikeout number two. That looked like the split finger. Again, making that hitter feel uncomfortable at the plate by changing speeds. See the dip on that? This, now There's look, that splitter. Maybe from this angle. That's coming in a little above the knees, and it almost dropped down into the dirt. That's how much vertical drop there is to that. I guess that's the only kind of drop you can have is vertical <laughs> drop right. Can't have horizontal drop. Yeah I hope not. Swing on a foul one strike. So Yelich walked with one out in the first and then it's just been if contact was made at all soft contact. Missed. That's, I think, the hardest fastball he's thrown tonight at 93. Well, the first one, Garcia had that tail on it that rolled in on him, and Garcia fouled it off. And that's for the four seamer that went outer half of the plate. See the highs and lows, changing speeds, adding and subtracting. And a strikeout of Maeda or of Garcia by Maeda, and he sent out eight men in a row. On Fox Sports North is brought to you by Grand Casino. Let your story begin. And by Toyota. Dear driver, hurry in and save. Toyota. The weather has been so good on this homestand after the rain. Postponed the game Friday night. It's just been perfect. Buxton takes a strike over the inside corner. We just wish fans could join us here because it's uh, a beautiful ballpark, even when it's empty. But it's a lot more beautiful when when it's full. <laughs> One strike to Buxton, then Avila and Kepler. And oh, nice play, play by Smoke. That ball spinning away from him, and Buxton's retired. One away. It's not lost on me that I'm really lucky that I'm able to be at the ballpark to watch this Twins team play. Buxton hitting it right off the end of the bat. Yeah, watch the cue ball effect almost. Uh, and Smoke does a good job of getting over there and then taking it himself. Here's Alex Avila. He had a great game a couple games ago. A couple of walks, really nice defensive play. Scored a couple of runs. They pinch ran for him before they put on the safety squeeze. <laughs> and I think he appreciated that. You know what? We're talking about Maeda, how he does the kind of over the wind up where 
Burns kind of comes set like a, there's a runner at first base, almost a stretch position. One thing they've tried to get him to do is to come set more. And you see so many pitchers working out of this position there and then let it fly. Left field corner. Yelich has a long run and in front of the wall he makes the catch. Vila gave that a ride for out number two. Two down that'll bring up Kepler. Time now for a quick timeout with Tria. Andrew Martin, Burke Blatovan, Dick Bramer here at Target Field. Kepler hit a ground ball the first, his first time up. Over the outside edge, strike one. You know, you see that a lot in the minor leagues, Dick, where guys usually go over their head or they had a lot of movement and they're having trouble throwing strikes. And that's kind of been the history for Burns. So what they're doing is they're kind of saying, okay, man on first, think of that, and then Trust your stuff. I mean, we saw a 98 mile an hour fastball, that at 96. I think the theory is that, you know, if you have a lack of control, maybe if you minimize the body movement and, and you just try to. This keeps the left shoulder in easier okay. than sometimes when you're going over your head and flying open. But now you were an over the head yes. guy. I mean, yes. I. But that's one thing I always told myself is to keep that left shoulder in. And this I think what they are doing here to Burns is they're getting him in that stretch position. So when he comes up with that glove hand it'll come up toward third base and that keeps that left shoulder in. That wow. in the dirt and such a wild pitch it goes into the camera well and Kepler will reach that ball looked like it landed well in front of the plate and you don't see Max chase pitches like that very often. Well that was that slider that just got away and Kepler does get on first base via the wild pitch. That's that slider lands in front of the plate and into foul territory. Twins get their second base runner via a walk in here a strikeout and a wild pitch. Well, now Polanco will bat hit a ground ball the second his first time up. Kepler has a stolen base in his only try. Cut on and missed one strike. It might have been the first changeup that Burns threw, and it was a good one. The defense, how the Brewers play Polanco. And Kepler checked. This ones haven't done a lot of running, three steals and six tries, but you kind of use a cliche playing with house money here. Kepler didn't earn his way on. He was, you know, got there on by striking out on a wild pitch. Let's see if they send him here. Long hold. And Polanco just took it down the middle for a strike on two. Well, when you hit 307 home runs like the uh, Twins did last year, why try to steal yeah. a base? I know you'd like to get in the scoring position here for Polanco. He does have a couple home runs on a year. And both of them coming from the left side of the plate. 26 hits for Polanco, but just one double. Kepler goes, pitches down and away, and Kepler has a stolen base. So the stolen base gets him into scoring position. Nice pitch to steal on, an off-speed pitch down and away. Well, watch the late kick of Burns, see how high it is right there. Even though it's a pretty good throw, Kepler got an outstanding jump. Now a Polanco single, single might put the Twins in front.
down and in. Nice scoop by Narvaez. Neither team has a hit. For the first time tonight, there's a runner at second base. Whether it's sustainable or not, but the Twins have been great with runners in scoring position. That's wide of the bag at first. Polanco already in his seventh season with the Twins. Remember when he came back up uh, back in 2014. From a ball mm -hmm. and started hitting right away. Made the All Star team last year. Maeda hoping for some run support. He's gotten plenty of it in his first Twins season. Oh. And now away. It's a full count with Cruz on deck. And Burns really wants to get Polanco here. Ended up walking Cruz on five pitches when he faced him in the first inning. This is where the guy on the on deck circle can scare you. So see what Polanco gets right here. You've seen a lot of breaking balls on 3 2, but do you do it and miss and then have to face Cruz? Popped up. And over for a look at Sogard, but it's out of play. He got the fastball, but just got underneath it. Burns just making his second start for the Brewers this year. Only his sixth major league start. And this is his 66th appearance in the big leagues. Another 3 2 coming to Polanco. Got him with a changeup. And Kepler left at second base, scoreless through three here at Target Field. Relatively low scoring game. Both starters have done a nice job so far, hasn't been so much. As a hit on the board, much less a run. Yelich will lead off the fourth against Maeda. Now 26 complete innings as a Twins pitcher. 16 1 2 3 innings. Yelich walked on four pitches in the first inning. Ball one. He's the only base runner so far for the Brewers against Maeda. His numbers will get better. I think everybody in baseball is confident of that. But the lineup around him is not as imposing as it was. I mean. Mike Moustakas was really a potent bat in the lineup. Eric Thames, Lorenzo Kane, obviously. I mean, they, they they had a formidable lineup and a deep lineup. And now you look at the lineup and it's like, well, Braun struggling, and some other guys are struggling. And so then you know Yelich's numbers are going to. Be sacrificed because of that too. Yeah, he's maybe not protected as well as the, he was in the past. You know, Ryan Braun just kind of getting going a little bit. He's a big bat in that lineup. When he gets hot, he can carry a ball club. Two and one from Maeda to Yelich. Just missed the outside edge. Three and one. Oh, Yelich, the last two years, won the uh, batting title in the uh, National League. MVP a couple years ago for the Brewers. 
Well, we're more than three weeks into the regular season, and the training camp was about three weeks long, and through it all, Yelich has been struggling. I mean, when they had inter squad games and all that, his swing wasn't right. He wasn't getting hits, and uh, he was very disappointed in the camp that he had. Now, the difficulties carried forward into the real season. Well, I hope he finds it like starting Friday <laughs> when they leave town. 3 2 to the leadoff man in the Milwaukee Four. Because he will find it. Follow back again. Yelich in his third season with the Brewers came up with the Marlins back in 2013. Number one pick by the Marlins back in 2010 out of Westlake High School. It's in the L.A. area in California. Another three two. And another foul ball. Not something we've seen Maeda do or, or be subjected to a lot. A lot of foul balls. And Yelich is really having a grinding at bat here. I think if you ask Maeda, even though he's had 37 pitches in the first three innings, which is outstanding, and so was Burns, he's right at 38 pitches after three. I'd have to say that if you talk to him, right, he just doesn't feel as comfortable maybe as he did in the, some other starts. He's kind of battling it himself a little bit right here. And ends up got striking him. out Yelich anyway. And strike out number four. No hits, no runs. So Burt Blyleven, let's get caught up. Well, it's been pitching, 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 and you know, it's exactly both starters have pitched outstanding. Both starters have walked one batter. Both starters had three strikeouts in the first three innings. Now with Maeda with four strikeouts, but both of them attacking the strike zone. And that's what you like to see. Window Concepts getting us caught up, and now here's Hira. That's bounced off a leg. Yelich, I think, fouled off what three or four pitches, and finally got a pitch. This little slider that just kind of spun. And Yelich swinging through it. One strike now to Hira. It's that split finger. Four strikeouts, three ground ball outs, three outs through the air. And on three pitches, Hira goes down. Second time that Hira has gone down on strikes, two down. Took a perfect game into the fourth inning at Miller Park against the Brewers. Like another splitter right there. Starts knee high. And then the bottom just falls out of it. There's Justin Smoke. Hit the ball pretty hard. Maybe the hardest hit fair ball against Maeda. And Sano made a nice pickup to end the first inning. 1 0. 50th pitch coming up for Maeda in his four starts. He's thrown 84, 83, 80, and 85 pitches. One and one. 15 in the first, then a quick second inning, and another 15, and see if he can end this inning with 14. I need a ground ball out here. Am I? You're we've had it. We've had a couple of eight. Yeah, a couple of two hoppers and a six hopper. That's all we've had on the ground so far. Two and one. In the air, foul. Two and two. On the outside edge, he struck out the side. Three straight 
one two three innings a scoreless game. We'll see if Nelson Cruz can do something about that. Cruz started 2020 with a blistering series in Chicago cooled off a little bit but now he's swinging it awfully good again. Yeah last four ball games you can see six for 12 with four home runs. Such a short compact strong swing with that uppercut swing. And Burns wanted nothing to do with him walked him on five pitches with the bases empty and two out in the first. It's the outside corner strike one. Look at that OPS one one three one. Inside now one and one it will be Cruz Rosario and Gonzalez. Yeah Cruz in his 16th major league season he actually came up to the big leagues with the Brewers back in 2005. Check his swing they'll appeal no swing. And it's two and one. Yeah, most time he has spent with a ball club that was the Texas Rangers for eight seasons. Also has played for the Orioles, the Mariners, and now with the Twins for the second season. Inside now three and one. And again by baseball. Standards, he was a late bloomer. Things didn't really click for him until he was about 27 years old. Mm -hmm. Three and one. Three and two. Well, it just shows you never give up on your dream. I mean, I followed Cruz, you know, through Twitter, and you kind of follow him uh, during the. Uh, time that everybody had off and his workout routine very steady he knows exactly what he has to do when he comes to the ballpark every day. Bouncer left side easy play for Urias. And Cruz is retired one away. I'll bring up Rosario. Baseball is back the MLB app is the only place to get all your baseball action in game video highlights. Live pitch by pitch, breaking news, player updates, stat leaderboard, standings, much more. Download the MLB app today, the number one app for live baseball. Here's Rosario, some a pretty deep fly ball to left, gathered in by Yelich for the final out of the first inning. He jumped on that first pitch. Just missed inside. Chopped up the right side and smoke to the pitcher covering two down. Well, something you work on uh, in spring training a little PFP pitcher fielding practice. I thought right there that uh, they just thought about taking a look at it, but watch Burns get over. I thought he was going to grab it right here, but it got by him. So you go over there, become the first baseman. With a shovel pass for the second out. In the video room took a quick look at it, no challenge, and here's Marwin Gonzalez. Gonzalez with a bouncer to short. In reality, it's been Burns who's getting the weak ground balls in tonight's pitching matchup. There's a pitch down and in ball one. Cruz sent a three or four hopper to the left side. Rosario nubbed one up the right side. You're not counting those hops, are no, you? No, no. Okay. okay. And down low in the dirt again. Two and zero. Oh. Night games tomorrow and again on Thursday, and then the Twins go to Kansas City again. More fun with the Royals. <laughs> Well, it's been the Brewers and the Royals, has it not, over the last couple yeah, weeks? But three weekends in a row <laughs> that the Twins are playing the Royals. They'll be done with the Royals. They haven't seen the Tigers yet. 
2 0 to Gonzalez. Left field. Yelich over in the gap. Looks like he's got plenty of room to make the catch on the edge of the track. Another 1 2 3 inning for Corbin Burns. Pitching duel between Burns and Maeda. Maeda struck out five men in a row to face Ryan Braun. Swung on and missed. All right. Here's a little trivia question, a bonus okay, trivia good, question. Good, good. I'm I ready. Know how good you are. Uh, not very good, but go ahead. What's the Twins record for consecutive strikeouts in a game for one pitcher? I'm going to say eight. Close. Seven. Seven. You want to take a guess, guess? on who it was? Yeah, there's two strikes now to Braun. Well, I'm going to say maybe like Santana. Liriano maybe? Liriano's one, and the other one I'm guessing you won't get. He predated you. He didn't date you, but he predated you. I have no idea. Jim Merritt. Oh wow. One of our fantasy campers. And there's strikeout number six in a row. Braun out on strikes for the first out of the fifth. How about that? They're right after him. Start looking for that off speed stuff. Braun big swing. Got a piece of it, but right into the glove of uh, Avila. Pepsi game reset. Nothing but zeros. Twins have uh, taken a walk. They've had a batter reach on a strikeout. Maeda has issued one walk. That's been it. Here's Narvaez. Hit a six hopper to Luis Arise in the second inning. Strike one. Remember, I talked, I think, in the fourth inning about Maeda just not finding it. I think he found it. I should say so. <laughs> One strike to Narvaez. 70% strikes. Lester leading. Liriano struck out seven batters in a row against Atlanta in June of 2010. Jim Merritt did it against the Washington Senators back in 1966. Mm. Strike called and it's one and two. The season high for uh, strikeouts for Maeda. Now well, there have been just four prior starts. Is six. And here in the middle innings, he struck out six in a row. A career high 13 came in is with the uh, Dodgers back in 2016 against the Padres. Two and two to Narvaez. The seventh strikeout in a row tying a club record. And yeah, what a swing. A weak swing that was too. There's that split finger. Look at the movement away this time rather than straight down. This one kind of tailed away. Nasty. Now Gamble will come to the plate. Maeda has a chance to set a team record for consecutive strikeouts. Breaking ball over strike one. Foul strike two. And he saw that where that pitch was. It was barreling in on him, and Gamble got the head out, but hit it foul. Two straight breaking balls. 60th year of Twins baseball, and Maeda's tied a club record tonight.
and he set the club record with his eighth straight strikeout. Congratulations. Great job. He pounded that strike zone. Don't leave. Don't leave. Come back. Well, our trivia question who has struck out the most Brewers in their career? Burt Blylevin struck out 207 of them mm. in 31 games with the Twins. That doesn't count your strikeouts when you were with the Indians or the Rangers. 1 0 to Luis Arise. Arise, Sano, and Buxton. That'll scare you. Oh. You need to be around. Old blue eye. So. To the gap in right center go. field, and go. the first hit of the game goes to Arise. He'll go to second. He's got a leadoff double. He hit a liner to center his first time up. That was caught by Garcia, and here he hit one to the gap. That looked like he caught up to that fastball from Burns and hit it sharply right in that gap. Arise picking up his second double on the season. That man can hit right there. Garcia has to chase it and retrieve it back in. Now Sano went down swinging his first time up. Strike over the inside corner with a fastball. Yesterday, Sano offered some encouragement. He absolutely crushed a ball to right center field hit the scoreboard and went for a double but it wasn't the double it was where it was hit and what we've seen at least in Sano's first at bat and the first pitch of this at bat they're pounding him hard inside mm -hmm. trying to keep him from extending his arms. Breaking ball away, one and one. The slider just missing. Fastballs in, sliders away. Occasional changeup from Burns. One and one. And a base hit left center field headed to the gap. Arise around third. He'll score. The big man digs for second base. And he pulls in with a double. And the Twins take the first lead. Tell you what, he fought off that fastball that was barreling in on him and showed off his strength. How he hit that ball so sharply through the infield. Sano with his fourth double of the year, picking up his eighth RBI. Look at that. He got the he got out quick. Yeah, there's maybe three an, guys standing on that side. Yeah. <laughs> Anticipating maybe, you know, that he's going to go back inside. He did. But I scores. And it's a one nothing Twins lead. 108 off the bat. An RBI double. And now here's Buxton. He went right off the end of the bat. Fielded by Smoke near the first base bag. For an out leading off the third. Well, back a strike. Buxton with a dozen runs batted in because he's done well with runners in scoring position. Had to drive one in here with a hit to the outfield. Ooh. Bullet just beyond the Milwaukee bench. Here are a camera man down there. Two quick strikes to Buxton. Burns has three strikeouts in a ball game. Off the end of the bat near second base. And coming in to make the catch is Hira, one away, and that'll bring up Avila. Let's go to Andre Martin. 
Well, guys, as we all know, the Twins have thrilled baseball fans in the upper Midwest for 60 years, much like they are doing tonight. And so Dick Bramer's book, Game Used, chronicles Twins history through his eyes, first as a fan and then for nearly 40 years as a broadcaster. So Game Used is available wherever books are sold and here at Target Field. It makes a great gift. I can tell you it's a wonderful book. So get your hands on it. You will not be disappointed. It's, a, it's a nice read, too. What? Very nice. Big well, you, letters. <laughs> I threw some, some pictures in there. Yes, for you. you did. I don't thank you. You not only wrote the forward, but you're the subject of a few of the stories in there. <laughs> Ball one to Alex Avila. And, and they're all true. <laughs> Hard to believe, but yeah, they're all true. <laughs> Avila with a warning track fly ball to left his first time up. First two hits of the game have gone to the Twins back to back doubles to start this inning. And now foul off a leg one and one. That smarts right there. Time. So no, it's second after his RBI double. Sixtieth pitch for Burns. That's to the backstop, ninety feet for Sano. Yeah, second wild pitch for Burns. He came into the ball game with no wild pitches, and that allows Sano to get in the scoring position just 90 feet away. That changeup. Well, that's just off the corner of the plate. That's not a good job by Narvaez to no. block that. He tried to I backhand agree. that. It was right under his shin. Gun. Yep. Got to move your body. Infield creeping in now. Three infielders on the right side. Two and one to the Twins catcher. See if Avila can get it airborne. Three and one. Kepler on deck. Just like he did in his first at bat. Ball four. Full count. We've talked about his great eye at the plate. Vila on the season has six hits, but he's drawn eight walks. Swing and a miss, a strikeout for out number two. And strikeout number four for Burns. We'll leave a second run scoring in the hands of Kepler. The slider just kind of spun. I think it was Roy Smalley saying that's maybe Justin, that that's the uh, sometimes the hardest pitch to to yeah. see and hit. And the way yeah, Justin it explained spins. it, yeah, he says you, you see the spin. Yeah. So you think it's going to move, but it doesn't move. <laughs> yeah. Just stays on the same plane. Chris Hook, the pitching coach, coming out. Well, Burns has certainly given the Brewers a good chance here. Just a couple of hits allowed. Kepler reached on a strikeout and stole second in the third inning. What a gorgeous night. I feel uh, very privileged to be here. It's kind of a weird feeling for me. I don't know about you. I mean, I'm, I'm, I know I'm lucky to be here, but I 
I wish more people were here with me. It's, a, it's the same feeling I had when I started my Twins broadcasting career in 1983. <laughs> I was there, but hardly anybody else was there because the team wasn't very good. I spent five years in Cleveland, so this is a really good crowd. <laughs> so no with a big lead off the third, and Kepler takes just off the plate, ball one. You know what? If you're a player out there, yes, the crowd does play into it, but your focus, your concentration, you have to be in it whether there's one fan in the stands or 50,000. Down and in 2-0. Well, in the last homestand, Nelson Cruz had a walk-off double off the center field fence, and they celebrated as much as you're supposed to these days. And I think it was Max Kepler came out and sprayed him with hand sanitizer. <laughs> I mean, and Cruz afterwards said that, was, that wasn't any fun. It was boring. You know, you want to, <laughs> yeah, you want to hug your teammates after they the win the ball game. Fans play a big part. Sure, they do. Cut on and missed. Third baseman Sogard sneaking behind Sano because of that large lead. Two and one. It's a good changeup right there that uh, Burns has featured throughout the ball game. The slider has been a little inconsistent. You can see he's got the arm strength. Fastball in the upper 90s. Hmm. Swung on and missed. Two and two. Consolation, I don't suppose, if the Twins end up winning this ball game one to nothing. But Burns has pitched awfully well here yes, against. Yes, he has. Play. Two and two to Kepler. Now three and two. Polanco on deck. Just off the plate. Kepler takes a walk. First and third, two down, and now Polanco. Yeah, second walk of the ball game for Burns. I mentioned Burns, his first outing this year was a start against the Cubs. He threw 75 pitches, but after that in relief outing, 64, 68, 69, and he's closing in on 70 now. I wonder how long they'll go with him. Bullpen starting to loosen up a little bit for the Brewers. Blanco came up with Kepler at second and two down and struck out. And Alex Claudio, one of the left handers, one of four left handers out there warming up. And a big at bat right here by Polanco. Off to third, so no back easily. <laughs> so no says, Yeah, try that again. I'll break you in half. So no retreating to the bag, almost as if he knew the pickoff throw was coming. to Polanco. Two and O. Oh. Oh, Burns sailing along through four innings, and yeah, the Twins have gotten back-to-back -back doubles, but and he got Buxton. He got a Vila with a runner at third and one down. And he does not want to have to face Cruz this inning. Last couple pitches a little bit on the lazy side, so that pitch count mounting. Kepler just getting back. Kepler able to get that hand back on the bag, the right hand. 
That's where you want to slide on the outfield slide side of that first base bag. Strike. And it's two and one, especially in this age of replay when just that little literally an inch or two in the tag, the movement of the glove can make the difference between safe or out. Kepler stole second base in the third inning. But that was when the Twins did not have a runner in scoring position. Here in the fifth, they do. Swung on and missed two and two. Blanco struck out and didn't seem to really have a good swing through the entire at bat back he in the had third that, inning. He had that one pitch that he fouled off, and then Burns threw him a changeup that struck him out in the third inning. Extraordinary average with two strikes. Burns got him with a third strike in the third inning. Popped up out of play. That's the one he missed in his previous at bat and then Burns pulled the string and struck him out. Trying to deliver another big two out hit. Kepler goes and takes second base without a throw. Another good pitch to go on with an off speed pitch down and away. Now the count is full and Kepler has two steals tonight. Now a hit to the outfield. Should score a couple of runs. With a huge lead off the third, bluffing down the line. That is foul. Right off the end of the bat. Really had to work here in this fifth inning. So far, he's given up just the one run, and he's pitched so well. Yet if he gives up a base hit here to a 300 hitter, he's likely going to find himself behind three nothing. Ball four, and they're loaded up now for Nelson Cruz. Third time through the order, and Burns has walked the two men. He has been asked to get. Great council wants Narvaez to go out and talk to Burns. Yeah, Brewers don't have a right hander warming up, I don't believe. Just uh, Claudio was warming up, a left handed pitcher. Looks like he's ready if asked to come in. And they don't want. No. The side armor to come in and face Nelson Cruz. So we'll see what Cruz can get done here. A walk in the first inning on five pitches. And he had a ground ball to short. Five runs batted in in two prior at bats with the bases loaded. Breaking ball up and in. Told you about Burns's control issues, and we also told you that he'd had three straight relief appearances. Yeah, I just think he's running out of gas here. I think that arm, uh, not used to getting into the 70s, not as sharp. Got him to swing and miss on a pitch down and away. We haven't really seen that fastball in the upper 90s anymore. Now it's yeah. more sliders and changeups. He's pitched great so far. Foul 
back. In his start against the Cubs, he threw 75 pitches. In his three relief appearances, they were long relief for anywhere from three and two thirds to five and a third, but he threw 64, 68, and 69 pitches. So he hasn't come close to the number of pitches he's thrown here tonight. And the game might be on the line right here in this at bat. And you can see here how many in the fifth inning. This will be pitch number 32. One and two to Cruz. Two and two. Well, he has routinely had his team put up some multi run innings in support of his great pitching. So far, just one on the board. Well, let's make it four more. Ouch. Got in on the handle of his bat. That's that 97. 97 right. <laughs> he definitely has the arm strength. That ball running in on him, almost a two seamer. Cruz just fighting it off. Two and two to Cruz. Breaking ball got him. What a job by Burns. The Twins get a run, but they leave three. Powered by Google Cloud. How'd you like to try to hit this? <laughs> I told, said earlier it's about adding and subtracting and using the whole strike zone, and it's exactly what he's been able to do. The record had been seven. Set by Francisco Liriano and Jim Merritt. And Maeda, Maeda enters the sixth inning with a 1 0 lead and eight straight strikeouts. Fouled away. Now, most Twins fans remember Liriano. Not many, perhaps, remember Jim Merritt. He was a part of the 1965 American League Championship Ball Club that lost to the Dodgers in the World Series. Spent parts of four years in the Twins organization. They traded him. To the Reds for shortstop Leo Cardenas. And then he won 20 games with the Reds in 1970. Left handed pitcher. One and one to Urias. In play on seven hops. <laughs> One down. And the seven guys behind him said, hey, finally, we get to play. Of course, the eighth, the catcher. Oh, what a streak. You know, you watch baseball, you get an opportunity to sometimes see history being made in, in Twins history. Congratulations. Well, with the pitch count of 67, let's not rule out the possibility that yep. more pitching history might be made here yes, tonight. He's so. allowed just one base runner. Yelich drawing a four pitch walk in the first inning. Here is Sogard. Out in front, strike one. If you're a youngster at home and you don't throw a 100 miles an hour that scouts are looking for, watch. Watch this young man right here work. Get set. And a butt up the line foul. And here we go with the unwritten rules of baseball again. So guard in a one nothing game is I think just fine bunting there but fact of the matter is the Brewers still don't have a hit. I have no problem with that either. Okay. Again, you're, again, you're not here to make friends. You're here to win ball games. It's seven nothing. It's different, so but it's not. It's one to nothing. Right. He's a number nine batter. Seventieth pitch coming up. Two strikes to Sogard. And given the shift, why if not that's, try if it? that's what's given, absolutely. Well, Sogard was the first of eight straight strikeouts that Mahada had. Got a piece of even the foul balls are softly hit.
You know, he came into a bang when, with the Dodgers when he first came to the Dodgers. Back in 2016, he won 16 ball games for the Dodgers. He's kind of in and out of the rotation over the last couple of years. The Twins saw him, they know him. They figured, hey, he's going to fit nicely in our rotation. Oh, Arise charges. Polanco almost got in his way. Two down. That was what, six hops? So two down, and now back to the top of the order in Avasail Garcia. Maeda set down the first 11 men he faced when he pitched in Milwaukee against the Brewers. Well, he's good. He has good history against the Brewers, making his seventh career start. He's three and two, but an ERA under three. Called back a strike. One ball has left the infield. Gamble hit about a 200 foot fly ball to Buxton in the second inning. Swung on and missed two strikes. Take by Garcia. One and two to Avasail Garcia. Check his swing, two and two. Tried a couple sliders right there, both missing down and away. Mahata making his 108th major league start. Last outing that he beat the Brewers was his 50th major league win. Too often you see major league hitters having the swings that they that we've seen here tonight. Well, yeah, but I, you know, we've seen it four other times. I mean, really good hitting lineups. The White Sox hitting the ball awfully well, and they had mm -hmm. kind of futile swings and at bats against Maeda in his Twins debut. Pitch number 77. Back to Maeda. Six innings of no hit ball and a one nothing twins lead. A streak of eight straight strikeouts on the night to set a new Minnesota Twins record. He has now retired 17 straight Milwaukee batters. But then he did get one run of support from Miguel Sano. He's responsible for the lone run, driving in Luis Arise in the bottom of the fifth inning to make it a one nothing ball game, which is where we stand as we hope to see the Twins add to it here with Eddie Rosario coming up to bat for Minnesota. Dick and Burke. All right, Alex Claudio coming out of the Milwaukee bullpen to pitch to the Twins in the bottom of the sixth inning. Yeah, Claudio's numbers making his seventh relief appearance. He's worked six and a third innings. Only a couple walks with four strikeouts. I'll give you that underarm type of delivery. Rosario skies the first pitch over the Twins dugout out of play. Claudio, 28 years old, originally drafted by the Rangers, came up with the Rangers in 2014. In his second season with the Brewers. Last year, very reliable out of that bullpen. 83 relief appearances Claudio last year for the Brewers floats down and away. Claudio out of 
Puerto Rico. Short center. Garcia running in. Under it now. One down. And that'll bring up Marwin Gonzalez. Don't know how this game will turn out, but to me, the remarkable thing about this twin season so far this year, Bert, is the number of low scoring games they have won. The type of game you expect to see come playoff team if this team gets to the playoffs. You know, we enjoyed the slugfest last year, winning ball games 9 5 and all. That was fun to watch. But this is a completely different team in how they're doing it. They're they're winning ball games with pitching and defense, and that well, you'd think long term would vote very well for them. I think anytime you look at a winning team, you say, "What are the, what did they have? They had good defense. You have to have good defense. That helps your pitching staff out, and of course, scoring runs, which the Twins are capable of doing. Very solid lineup. Very good ball club." That's to left center field. Garcia hustling over and makes the catch in the gap. Two down. And that'll bring up Hot Eyes. Join us for the virtual Swing for the Kids Classic presented by Caribou Coffee. Take a swing for the kids to honor the kids and heroes that have made an impact in your life. Snap a photo or video and share who you swing for on Twitter and use the hashtag Swing for the Kids. Two up, two down for Claudio and now Arise, who started the fifth inning with a double. Sano followed it with another one of his own. And that's been it, the only run of the game. Ball one. I think he would be tough on left handers with that frisbee type breaking ball he has, and he's got a sinking fastball. It's a change up right there. One and one. The 83 relief appearances last year. He worked 62 innings. And now two and one. Of the Milwaukee dugout now two and two. I would guess Corbin Burns is going to be in the rotation for the Brewers for a long time. Just what he showed in the fifth inning alone, that whole inning could have gone sideways on him. I think what he threw through 33 pitches, I believe, that inning too. So yeah, he got a great workout and kept the club in the game. That's what you want to do as a pitcher. Two he, two to arrive. He did his job. Liner caught in the air. Yes, says the third base umpire Jordan Baker. A one, two, three, six for Claudio. And we head to the seventh. No hits. First six innings set a twins record with eight straight strikeouts from this third inning to the fifth inning. Right now, 77 pitches, 54 for strikes. The only man to reach was Yelich with a four pitch walk back in the first inning. And Maeda came back to strike him out in the fourth. That was strikeout number three in the string of eight. Pitch counts reasonable at 77. Outside ball one. So six innings complete here tonight. Five of them, one, two, three innings. So he's had 19, one, two, three innings in 29 innings pitched for the Twins. That's how good he's been. Finally, agreement between Maeda and Avila. Three hops to an eyes, one down. 
Twins have not had a no hitter in nine years. The last no hitter was by the aforementioned Francisco Liriano. Right. That too was a one nothing game. It was in Chicago on a cold night in May. Liriano walked six men that night, but won one to nothing. Well, Mahato's not picking up the strikeouts now. Now he's getting the ground ball outs. As you mentioned, Dick, only one fly ball out so far. And again, in terms of his pitch count, that's probably more important. Yes. Down and away, ball one, the 80th pitch of the night. Europe has struck out twice against Maeda. Two and oh. Yardley's been really good for the Brewers this year. He looks like he's going to be the next up out of the shoot. Three and oh. And obviously, Maeda's has not been in the stretch since the first inning. Smoke on deck. See if he can come back from three and oh. There's one. A swinging strike. And you're up there and you've already struck out twice against this guy. There's two. And that was that little slider. That's how much confidence he has in that fastball location in the slider. And then of course the split finger. Popped up. Stay in here. Sano over for a look. He's got room. Two down. And now Justin Smoke. Smoke hit a ground ball to Sano. That might be the hardest hit ball in the ball game. He hit a one hop smash to Sano's glove side, fielded it right by the bag. It was an easy out, but that's the, the closest thing there's been to solid contact tonight. Missing ball one. There was a soft line drive off the bat of Braun behind the second base bag, but Arise was standing right there. On the left field line chased by Rosario, no play. Again, one ball has left the infield, and that was a short fly ball to Buxton. In center, back in the second inning. Yeah, nine strikeouts, seven ground ball outs, and three fly ball outs. Only one to the outfield. And you see the pitches he's used. One and one. See, look at that swing. I mean, you don't see that too often. I mean, Smoke, he's been around the game a long time. I guarantee you, not too many times he's taken a swing like this. This looks like a split finger. But again, about a two foot drop mm -hmm. from the plane the ball left his hand from. Just got a piece. Now pitch number 90. Maeda working with an extra day of rest. Now 
Now two and two. See how far that Wes Johnson and uh, Rocco Baldelli want to go with uh, Maeda. He's a strike thrower. Two and two to Justin Smoke. Three and two. Look at the movement on that pitch right there. That ball almost like a frisbee just darted in on Smoke. Braun on deck. Take a look at this pitch right here. Just a little cutter. Got him. Seven no hit innings for Kenta Maeda. This is Car Car from section 213. You go through the organ bar to get to my seats, but not right now because we have to watch from our home bar. Boo hoo! Where I watch with my friend. Who you guys traded? <laughs> Karen, I hope you're watching tonight. <laughs> Kenta Maeda might be making some baseball history here with seven no hit innings. Well, you saw Brian Dozier right there. He went to camp actually spring training with the Padres. They ended up getting released and now he's with the uh, New York Mets. Mm -hmm. Well the Twins hoping to add to the lead here. Eric Yardley as we said has just been outstanding. And we'll see what the Twins can do here with Sano who's driven in the lone run tonight. Yeah, Yardley in his first season with the Brewers last year spent time with the San Diego Padres sinking fastball slider and a changeup. An extra run would mean the world for the team, but also for Maeda. He's, you know, trying to make some history, but he's trying to win a ball game more than anything else. One and one. There have been five no hitters in Twins history. Eric Milton's was a seven nothing ball game. Scott Erickson's was six to nothing. Dean Chance won a two to one ball game that was a no hitter. So that was. A one run ball game, but the other two no hitters, Jack Kralix in 1962 and Liriano's in 2011, were one to nothing ball game. Wow. So there's a little extra pressure on the pitcher anyway in a one nothing ball game to say nothing about maybe making some history. So no, down the line, might have cracked his bat, but he's down for a base hit. He'll round first. Yelich comes up firing, and Sano has his second double. A leadoff double here in the seventh. Well, we saw Claudio last inning go from the left side with that frisbee type pitch, and here Yardley goes with that frisbee type pitch, but this one stayed up. And credit Sano lining it right down into the corner. By the time that Yelich could get it back in, Sano with the third hit of the ball game, but his second double. And Sano will be lifted for a pinch runner. Adrianza. Will run for Sano. Gives you some idea how important that extra run is for Rocco Baldelli. And Adrianza, we would expect, would stay in the game with Gonzalez switching over to first. Here's Buxton. Popped up. Go foul. Byron's been in a pop up run again, and on one pitch, the first out of the inning. And that'll bring it up to Avila. With a hit one off the end of the bat for a ground out in the third, and then a pop up behind the mound to Hira, and now one on foul ground to Smoke. Avila's 0 for 2. A warning track fly ball to left in the third. And he went down swinging in the fifth. Side edge. And 
now down and away. Brewer bullpen is been the least of their concerns. It's been really good. Josh Hader maybe out to his best start. Well, good setup, people. Combined 3.01 ERA is that bullpen. It's even better than the Twins as far as earned run average. Avila takes ball two. Adrianza at second with one down. 73 miles per hour and it's spun over for strike two. Tenth pitch for Yardley. Avila hoping to tack on an insurance run. Stopped by Narvaez with Adrian's almost halfway to third base when he stopped that pitch in the dirt. Now that frisbee type breaking ball got away from Yardley. What a nice stop, as you mentioned. Kind of like Avila stopped the other day, a couple games ago, when he made a really tough stop that mm -hmm. uh, helped the keep the double play in order. Now, granted, it was a line drive double play to left field, but. One of the big defensive plays of that game. We'll see how big this block is by Narvaez. Full count to Avila. Kepler on deck. Just missed. It broke around the plate, and Avila takes a walk. That's a good eye right there. And Council coming out. There'll be a pitching change. Take a look at the. Oh, it just stayed outside. So it'll be Kepler against the lefty as the Twins hope to add some more runs here in their half of the seventh inning. He's once on a strikeout, once on a walk, but he's got two men out there. And Suter, the left-hander, will face Kepler with one out in the seventh. Yeah, got a report on Suter fastball, not overpowering slider changeup. He's in his. Fifth season with the Brewers, making his seventh relief appearance. Twelve innings so far, pitched, one walk, 14 strikeouts. And a guy that's basically over the top, doesn't throw sidearm like we saw the last two relievers. Kepler takes a strike. Kepler really had a good year last year against lefties. He struggled this year, just two hits. In 23 at bats. Well, he's due. Single and a double. Twins got their run in the fifth, but left the bases full. Now another scoring opportunity here in the seventh. Swing foul one and two. Kepler can't get it done. Polanco the switch hitters on deck. Suter coming off that uh, Tommy John surgery he had in 2018 pitched a little bit last year. See right here what Suter feels his strikeout pitch is. Fouled away. Last year, Kepler hit nearly 300 against lefties. Hit lefties much better than right handers. He had 293 with damage. He hit nine home runs against lefties. He hangs in there tough.
low breaking ball lifted to short left. Sogard retreating. Out number two. Infield fly rule was called. Out number two. That'll leave this to Polanco. That was a good slider right there. Great location. Kepler just got a piece of it but popped it straight up. Polanco this year has been good from both sides of the plate. But actually better from the right side of the plate this year. He's hitting 350 as a right handed batter. You look at Suter's approach his stance if you will on the plate and he looks like he's going to be a sidewinder. Mm -hmm. you know, and then the ball comes straight over the top. the top. Yeah. One strike to Polanco. Two strikes to Polanco. Yeah, you wonder how pitchers get into habits like that. You now Kimbrel, remember he lifted his right arm up, mm -hmm. looking for the sign. Even though he's unorthodox right there, he gets himself back to where he needs to be. Oh, back. Remember Rob Nen? Is that the guy I'm thinking of that would swing his arm? No, not Rob Nen. Oh, yeah, I remember. Yeah. Would swing his arm mm -hmm. like a pendulum. Right. Hey. Mike Fetters did it for a while, too, toward the end of his career. Couple of men out there. Two strikes to Polanco. And a fair ball down the line. About that. Adrian's around third. He'll score. And a little more breathing room for Kenta Maeda. Big run batted in right there by Polanco, picking up his 11th run batted in. His second as a right handed hitter. Boy, he let, it, let that ball get deep into the strike zone at the last second. Just slashed it the other way. Looked like a breaking ball kind of stayed up. And a big RBI single by Polanco makes it a 2 0 Twins lead. And now Cruz. A walk, a ground ball, and a strikeout. Struck out, leaving the bases full in the fifth. Down and away, ball one. There's a swing and a miss. One and two. Cruz hitting 471 this year against left handed pitching. 471. <laughs> Chopped to the right side. Cruz hustling, but Hira throws him out. Twins get a two out RBI single from Polanco, and it's a two to nothing Twins lead. Gonzalez moving over to first base. And Adrianza is staying in the game at third. Seven no hit innings for Maeda. He'll face Braun, Narvaez, and Gamble. Down the line, but foul. One strike. The only base runner. Yelich's one out walk back in the first inning. It's been nothing close 
to a base hit. Yeah, let's keep it that way. One and one. Now my only question is how long do they go with Kenta? There's activity in the Twins pen mm -hmm. but it's Caleb Thielbar getting loose. I don't know that it would be a first relief option in a two nothing ball game. Swung on and missed one and two. Had a bullpen game yesterday, and it's not the teams are doing it, but when they're doing it, and the Twins felt comfortable doing it because they knew this guy would give them some length. But I don't know that anyone thought he'd pitch as well as he has here tonight. Strong on and missed. Strikeout number 11, getting Braun for the second time in a ball game. You know, I saw Len Barker pitch his perfect game. When I was with the Cleveland Indians, that's what his pitches were doing that night, just falling off the table. And hitters were having the same type of swings as against the Toronto Blue Jays that the Brewers are having here tonight against Mahada. Narvaez 0 for 2, a ground ball and a strikeout. Low ball one. Then Gamble. Strike call, a high strike, and it's one and one. One and two on the subject of pitch count. Pitching coaches and managers will look at the number certainly, but how many of those pitches have been thrown under duress? There haven't been any. Maybe a few in the first inning after the one out walk. But he has sailed through the early, middle, and now late innings so far. Tap to the right side. And foul. In complete control. Let her go. You know, the grimace is there, but his eyes never leave the target. Right. Two and two. Twisting foul. And just his fifth start for his new team, and they've all been good starts. And eight is five outs from making history. With the Dodgers, Rich Hill looking on with interest. And pushed foul over the Brewer dugout.
Another 2 2 to Omar Narvaez. 3 and 2. Good take right there. Another foul. And the pitch count keeps climbing. Four two strike fouls for Narvaez. Eleven strikeouts for Maeda. And he walked him. The first base runner for the Brewers since the first inning. It's a heck of a battle by Narvaez. And here comes Wes Johnson with the interpreter to just give Maeda a bit of a breather. And Avila will join the conference on the mound. Gamble is 0 for 2. He's hit the only ball that's left the infield. A short fly ball to center in the second. And Maeda struck him out in the fifth. Maeda's longest outing in the big leagues, eight and a third innings. That came back in 2017 against the Pirates. To be honest with you, I, I think if they can get him through this inning, I don't think he'll go out for the night. Really? Here's Gamble. Saw a no hitter combined when Chuck Finley and Mark Langston threw a combined no hitter in California. Just outside ball one. Swung on and missed. The corner one and two. Well, he's changed speed so well all night long. And Paul Deli pacing yeah. the dugout. Yep. And Gamble down on strikes, two down. That'll bring up Urias. And strikeout number 12. Again, a career high 13 strikeouts when he was with the Dodgers. You look great at location. Yeah, but Split I, that's finger. such a good pitch so late in this ball game. Similar to the, you know, splitters he threw to rack up those eight straight strikeouts. Here is Urias, two ground ball outs. And again, it was Urias who drove in the two runs the Brewers got. Against Maeda in Milwaukee last week. He's the only Brewer hitter that he has not struck out. Ball one. One and one. Nolan Ryan used to grunt on almost every pitch. Aida will do that from time to time. One and one to Urias. Chopper. 
to arise. Eight no hit innings for Kenta Maeda and a 2 0 Twins lead. Discussion with Rocco Baldelli and Wes Johnson. If they had anything to say to Maeda, they would have said it to him right there. He's going to come out in the ninth inning. The Twins will try to maybe have a long half inning here against Perdomo to give Maeda a little extra time to gather up whatever he's going to need to try to make some baseball history. Well, for Perdomo, this is his major league debut getting called up just five days ago. 26 years old. They list him at six foot eight, about 260, out of the Toronto Blue Jay organization. Rosario to lead off the bottom of the eighth. Down and away, ball one. It'll be Rosario Gonzalez in her eyes. Verduno Mo with a fastball in the low 90s, a slider and a changeup. Two and zero. Twins with a run in the fifth, another in the seventh. Three and zero to Rosario. And a four pitch walk puts Rosario on first base. The Twins have taken five walks here tonight. And for Rosario, the ninth walk he's taken this year. Marwin Gonzalez. Gonzalez on the night, a ground out, and a couple of outfield flies. And a time called. Jerry Meal sees something. Something about the Perdomo's delivery, putting his hands together, if we we're able to eavesdrop on Jeremy Rehack. Jerry Meals, the second base umpire, now joining the discussion, actually initiating it with great counsel. Narvaez trying to explain what the issue is with Perdomo. Something about putting his hands together and whether. He's breaking them and then committing a balk. Perdomo from the Dominican Republic, 26 years old. Major League debut. Five pitches, no strikes. Hold up a few 
few days ago from the alternate training site. Foul back. Just looking at Perdomo's numbers last year, he struck out 107 batters in double A, triple A combined in 69 and a third innings. An opponent sitting only 213 off of him. Started the year as a Biloxi Shucker, promoted to triple A San Antonio. One and one to Gonzalez. and Pirates are starting the 10th inning. Indians are going to play the next few games without Terry Francona who's going to have some surgery and uh, intestinal issue. And our prayers go out to Terry. Been through a lot. In the dirt Rosario thought about it and he hesitated and then probably wisely decided not to go. Usually saying is true if you hesitate you're lost or in this case you get thrown out. Now, Tommy Watkins right there I'm sure screaming get back get back. That was the first slider he threw. And it's a hard slider. Popped up. And out of play. Well, this has already been a longer half inning with Perdomo's control issues. There was a little conference near the mound, and Maeda somewhere is getting a chance now to catch his breath a little bit. And somewhere in the back of his mind, I would imagine there is a number of pitches that he'll allow Maeda to try to make some history. And I have no idea what that number is. He's already thrown more pitches than he ever has in the big leagues. There goes Rosario and the pitch is a called third strike and Rosario oh, and got overslid it. the bag. He got there and then slid off the bag and Jerry Meals called him out. So important for that middle infield to do exactly what he did keep. I don't think Eddie realizes he's been called out. Can he keep his hand on the bag. <laughs> by his fingernail he claims. Well the twins are going to challenge this. And Jerry Meals looking down had a pretty good angle on it. We don't know whether the glove was on Rosario. When his fingertip came off the bag. Where he tags them right here. Is he able to get that foot on the bag before the tag can be applied? Because his hand does go off the bag. And Rosario sliding off, but then his foot is back on the right. bag. Yeah. I have to say he's safe. So I think they will overturn the call. See, the fingertips are off. Mm -hmm. But the foot. Was on the bag. Right. The tag is made on his arm, but the foot there stays on the bag. And in Jerry Meal's defense, he maybe couldn't see the foot on mm -hmm. the bag. Right. But that should be overturned, and Rosario should have a stolen base. Safe as a call. Rosario has his stolen base. Gonzalez strikes out. And that'll bring up Luis Sarais. Third stolen base for the Twins here tonight. Kepler had a couple. Came into the game with just three on the year. They like doubled it. There you go. Again, <laughs> the California <laughs> high school man. Can't hide it. Arise got the first hit of the game. It came leading off the Twins' fifth. He doubled to right center field. Sano brought him in with another double, and the Twins added 
another run in the seventh. Strike on the outside edge. I think calling for a balk there. Jeremy Rehack said no. A strike to her eyes. And now a ball. Almost got enough on his mind. It's his major league debut, and Rosario's. <laughs> wow, that's really that's giving, Eddie. <laughs> giving him a headache. <laughs> the second base. <laughs> and now a balk is called. And something about Perdomo's delivery that's drawn the attention first, I think, of Jerry Meals at the start of this inning. And now a balk has advanced Rosario to third base. Well, the ball is in his glove, so I don't know what he's doing. Let's take a look right here. Yeah, okay. yeah a little lean yeah, forward. A little, a little lean forward, like he's starting his. So Rise is going to be walked to, they hope, set up a double play possibility, one would think. They have the infield in, and they are going to pitch.